Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will demonstrate to you the procedure to draw the isometric drawing when the orthographic projections for an object are given. So, in the given orthographic projections, we note that we have a front view, top view and the right side view given to us. The right side view uh, is uh, of height 5 grid spaces and uh, the depth is 6 grid spaces. So, the first step in making the isometric drawing is to make a box which will just envelop the object. Uh, so, the height of that object will be equal will, will be equal to 5 grid spaces. The depth will be equal to 6 grid spaces and the length also will be equal to 6 grid spaces. The length has to be visible in the front view. Length and height are visible in the front view. The depth and height are visible in the side view and in the top view we have only the length and depth. So, depth is visible in uh, the top view as well as in the side view. So, both are matching. So, both are 6. So, it has to be matching. So, let us start with making the box. So, the starting point has to be in such a way that the side view okay, so uh, allowed is the right side view. So, let us this is the 5 grid spaces for the height. So, then we have the depth so this way so in the side view side view of the box will be like this and uh, similar way the front view will be like this and the top view has to be 6 by 6 so already we have uh, references for that and we have the box ready so now we will change the color of the box so because it is just a construction feature so we will change it to the yellow color so uh, initially we will need to select the box and then we change it to yellow color now we start with the actual drawing now for isometric drawing we need imagination skill and uh, uh, for uh, aiding your imagination you need to understand the classification of surfaces you all know we have uh, in a given object possibility of uh, some principal surfaces some inclined surfaces and some skew surfaces the principal surfaces uh, are uh, uh, the best one to start with because uh, one thing is they are very easy to identify and at the same time they are very easy to draw once the principal surfaces are drawn, so you will get uh, ample number of uh, reference points for drawing the other surfaces uh, like the inclined and the skew surfaces. In this we note in the side view we have a T, inverted T visible. We do not see any other inverted T in, uh, the, in, in the front view and in the top view. That gives us the evidence that this T is a principal surface because for a principal surface one area view is possible and uh, two lines two line views are there. So, if other area view for this surface was there then another T should have been visible but nowhere other T is visible and that T has to be exactly aligned with the, the present T. So, we do not see such possibility. So, from this we conclude it is a principal surface and normally the uh, thick lines or, or, or the surfaces visible they are the they are the ones which is which are the topmost which are uh, so this surface in the side view so that corresponds to so the line here and this surface corresponds to the line here in the front view. So, it means it is at the extreme side 
of the length. So its location let us try to make. So we make it here. So we start with the T. So we, uh, we can easily count the reference points and uh, one by one along the edges you can proceed to mark those many points and we can represent the principal surface here. The other principal surface that is uh, there is this trapezium in the front view. We do not see any other trapezium correspondingly uh, possible in the side view or in the front view. So, we can conclude that it is the topmost surface corresponding to this line. Uh, so, we can draw this principal surface also. So, quickly we can complete this another principal surface. So, now these principal surfaces have given us good number of reference points. Now, we can focus our attention to the, uh, the inclined surfaces. We note that there is a triangle here corresponding to that exactly matching a triangle is there in the side view. So, this triangle. So, from and, and we have an inclined line here corresponding to both of these uh, surfaces. This triangle and this triangle within which the cursor is lying, this one and this one. So, they are both matching at least in height and in the top view also we have a line corresponding to this that indicates that it is an inclined surface and for that this particular line or th this particular line so that is the line which is just on the T we can conclude this because this uh, inclined line starts from there and we have only one point to look at, two of the points of this surface are already av available. So, these, so that uh, other point we can proceed through the coordinates, we can count how many grid spaces from the, uh, along this edge we have to move. So for that, two grid spaces we have to decrease in height, two grid space we have to move along the depth, and uh, then uh, this is the same edge here. So, in the front view, so we three grid spaces along length also we need to move. So, that movement we will do and from this point 1, 2, 2 grid spaces in uh, height we decreased, 2 grid spaces in uh, depth we increased. So, we reach this location, then 3 grid spaces in length we reduce and we reach this destination. So, from this destination to this destination, so we have the edge. So, similar way, so from the bottom also we can join up to this reference point. So, that way we complete the inclined surface. Please note another inclined surface which is here at the bottom, which is visible in the top view. So, this one and in the side view, so this one that automatically gets completed because uh, the reference points for them this is a, are already completed. Again you note we have this rectangle surface. So, that rectangle surface we have uh, the inclined line and uh, we have uh, uh, two area views because this is hidden here of course. So, but it is also in the, in the top view and in the side view this uh, rectangle surface is visible. So, that can be completed. So, its uh, location can be 3 grid spaces in this direction and 2 grid spaces in height we have to decrease and that way we can complete the inclined surface here, the rectangular inclined surface. Similar way so, this inclined surface, so we have uh, the three points already completed this, this inclined surface bound by this line, this line. So, we will get that in the next uh, part of the video. Welcome back friends. 
so we'll continue the discussion so we were talking about the uh, trapezoid surface here so we see a corresponding trapezoid surface whose one edge is hidden here in the side view also so the trapezoid surface in the top view and in the side view corresponding to that we have the inclined line here so it matches both so this that also is an inclined surface so for that inclined surface so we already see so the points one thing is this point which is on the t so that is also there so that means this edge this edge so two of the edges are visible or uh, or rather th this edge is also of that uh, inclined surface so we can complete the remaining edge and this way we complete uh, this inclined surface even now you note that we have uh, uh, this triangular inclined surface in which the cursor is lying in the side view so that uh, inclined surface so automatically got constructed uh, at least on one side on the rear side we have not yet constructed that so we have to construct that that will be visible it will be starting from this corner and that corner is visible to us so from that corner so we have to initiate so two of the points are already there with us for this inclined surface okay so so these two points where the cursor is lying so this one and this one they are available so this point we have to mark so now so from this point if you see how do we reach this point so for reaching that point so we need to if if, if you look at the top view we need to uh, decrease the length by three grid spaces now again coming back to the side view so this edge is same as so here this edge so we need to increase the height by two that means we, uh, move along the length by three grid spaces one two three and you increase the height by two grid spaces that means this point you will reach and uh, that is how so you will be completing that third surface the third edge is hidden for that surface so what you do so you can take the edge which is hiding it so as a trimming edge or or the cutting edge and you trim the portion of the edge which is not visible now this is uh, taking care of that uh, hidden aspect so you don't need to show any hidden line so only the visible lines you have to show in the isometric view isometric drawing and that is what we have done i uh, now see that we have uh, completed all the uh, visible features of the object in the isometric drawing so this is how you tackle the problem of the isometric drawing this is these uh, understanding of uh, the surfaces classification of surfaces as principal surfaces inclined surfaces and skew surfaces that helps a great deal in uh, having proper imagination uh, or giving shape to your imagination in the form of isometric drawing so this procedure uh, is quite helpful hope this is useful to you. Thank you.